Welcome back to This Isn't Normal, the the show where uh, things aren't normal. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of the bloody past, and I'm going to turn over to Beth in a second here. But I just want to say I hope everyone's staying safe, uh, staying healthy, staying on top of all of the crazy things going on in the world right now. Um, last week, we talked about itch.io's wonderful bundle that they did, and I wanted to quickly promote uh, Humble Bundle's Fight for Racial Justice bundle. Now, this bundle is only going to be available for a very limited time um, after this episode goes live, but if you're listening to it within a day or so of, uh, of the launch, it's definitely worth a look. Oh my gosh! Did you guys know fucking Pester Quest is in here? No. <laughs> what is that? I love that. That's like the new Homestuck video game. It's, I think it, it's it's a VN, oh, no. right? I don't know. I haven't played it. I think it's a VN. I haven't played it either. Um, it has Bioshock. It has Pester Quest. No time Ooh. to explain. Broken Age. Overgrowth. Just an incredible deal. And it's it it goes to the LDF Race Forward and the Bail Project. So please uh, support that. And without further ado, let me turn it over to Beth. Hey guys, just want to start off by saying Black Lives Matter. Um, Hell yeah! Don't, don't forget. Um, don't stop. Um, but uh, that extremely important message aside, let's get into today's game. Um, so last time you guys um, started your journey, um, you you know went to the juice box, juice yeah the juice box. Um, you you know got in on Speed's good side. You got into the bar. You got attacked by a mysterious thing. Um, who could also see the future. His name is Doodle Bunt Cake. Uh, you decided not to kill him. Uh, he uh, skedaddled right on out of there uh, into that great unknown. But um, after that, you went back to the hotel, uh, ignoring all of your other options, and um, convinced uh, Dandy um, to help you. On the, on the uh, you know, one, one little thing, uh, you guys have to figure out what the earthquake really was and if you remember someone offered to tell you yes um oh my god what's his name it's the his name is speed speed my love of my <laughs> life speed he, yeah he's gonna tell us we just got to get the cops off his tail right yep so the police were um apparently getting ready to raid the juice bar and the juice box and he said he would tell you if you could sort of just get him off, get him off the trail. Okay. But oh, just a, just a soft reminder um, that you still haven't gone to see Roger's um, workplace, and there is um, one other person who will tell you about the earthquake, but I won't tell you who. Just that there's only two people in this town who will tell you. Have we met and the other person? One of them. Huh? We haven't met the other person? You might have met them. <laughs> we might We've have met, met them. half of all people who would ever <laughs> tell us. <laughs> That's a pretty big accomplishment. If we meet the other one, we get an Xbox achievement. Um Ooh. no, I won't tell you if you meet the other person. You can um you can certainly ask. Um which would actually be a really funny way of going about it, but um you uh it, it would it would play out if it became necessary if you fail speed okay hmm. things will play out <laughs> i mean they're It'll gonna have fine. to i told you i told you when going into this like this is a this is a game you guys are a hundred percent capable of failing entirely that yeah well hopefully it won't come to that actually i feel like it'd be really interesting if you did well wouldn't that like destroy everything oh no uh, my the way I've written my endings, um, I think there's Plural. about three main endings, and um, none of them are necessarily correct. It's just whatever one you end up taking. So that's where we left you. Um, Dandy said she would help you um, if you found out why, and that's kind of where she left it. Also, she made you promise to leave Louisa out of things. So um, just take that reminder um, with like. 16 tablespoons of salt 
That's a lot of salt. Yeah, take it seriously. Yeah, I, that's an unhealthy amount of salt. I'm going to take it with a teaspoon. <laughs> Listen, it's a lot Sometimes of sodium. You need some fucking flavor. No, Sometimes you have much. water retention. <laughs> hey, ooh. Water retention for <laughs> Dehydration nation. Your ankles are the size of your, kid or your thighs. <laughs> no one wants that. Okay. I don't need bones. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think the best course of action, best based on Beth's not so subtle hints, is that we should probably check out Roger Hobble Scobble's location first. And if- no, I just didn't want you guys to fucking forget about it because I I was so convinced that was the first place you guys were gonna go, uh, and you just ignored it. So I'm not saying you're even gonna find anything there. I just want you to remember that that's on your plate. <laughs> Well, I think we should do that, and then as long as we still have time, I think then we should uh, somehow convince the police <laughs> to to do something else. Oh, uh, what what do you guys think? <laughs> what do you uh, what, are, what are we even going to tell the police? Well, I don't know. That's that's why we're going to do something else first, so we can all sort of like process it in the back of our heads. <laughs> all right. Um. Okay. So what what is Roger Hobblescobble's last known address location? Whatever uh, we got, it was it was the laboratory he worked at. Can we go there? Yes, you have the address. Dandy gave it to you. Do you guys want to go there? Uh, uh yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. It's... Shit, let me get a pen. Uh, pause the. <laughs> you guys keep talking. You're just pausing. I gotta get a pen. Guys, what are we gonna? I don't know. I'm just trying to stall going to the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But sh- should we go to the police? What well, if we? What if we? What if we tell the police that uh, we came through town to visit family, and uh, we completely divert them to somewhere else that obviously doesn't have alcohol? Like we say that. Uh, the not grocery store will figure out where <laughs> as we go along has alcohol because we were asking if there was anywhere in town because uh we're private investigators doodle where where doodle bunt cakes we are doodle bunt cakes and we are private investigators <laughs> we're all collectively <laughs> doodle bun cakes i think if we do that well, well we're gonna have to throw someone under the bus is the problem yeah but it's fine because they're not gonna arrest them unless they find alcohol but we can just imply that that somewhere else had alcohol and then they'll be sniffing around there for a while that's actually not the worst idea I'm a genius, I know. <laughs> Thank you. What if, what if we threw them... No, we ha- it has to be somewhere in town or else they're just going to call someone, some other police department to take care of it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So it's not the grocery store because the grocery store actually has alcohol, but maybe like <laughs> the gas station... Do those exist yet? Well, there's, they have yeah, to. there's cars. cars. Yeah. Gas stations... <laughs> Well, what if uh... an apartment complex somewhere? Because then they have to search everyone's houses, and they're gonna need a lot of warrants for that. I, I lean in real close and I say, uh, "What if we just ratted out the hotel?" I, but the uh, but the hotel no. actually has alcohol. Shit! I thought it was just <laughs> Snoop Bonnie Donnie. No, yeah, he's what? an alcoholic. He gets the alcohol from the juice bar. If we if we if we narc on Snoop Bonnie Donnie, he's gonna narc too. <laughs> and they did actually offer us alcohol. I don't know where they keep it, but they definitely have it. Yeah, that was alcohol. Oh yeah, how, how are you doing, Pete? <laughs> this piece is pretty good. Is he is he vibing? Pete's uh, listen. Pete's vibing. He's. He's chilling. He's he, he's pretty he sh- he's pretty sh- he's pretty schmacked if you know what I mean. Mm, I don't. He's <laughs> can can you tell me what that means? Well, it means schmacked? He's schmacked. Like he's he's it all bunked he, up. 
You ready for this, Max? You want to know what schmacked is? Yeah. That. Damn, just like in the face. Yeah. Yeah. He's all, he's all bunked up. It's good. He's all bunked up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? No, that's not good. That's not good. Well, <laughs> he is, in fact, bunked up on top of being schmacked. <laughs> bunked up and schmacked. Fuck. What a Friday he's night. He's having a whole day and night. <laughs> he got shot. He got schmacked. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot you got shot! Yeah, yeah. that's why that's I why needed the, the alcohol. Us alcohol. That's right. Because <laughs> they were like, right. you're gonna want to drink this because you're a baby. <laughs> and Pete baby. was like, yep. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need you guys to know I have a page of notes in front of me so that I can keep track of like how much money we have and like doing the little math from our, our first day <laughs> riddles. Um... I, in the bottom corner, I completely forgot to write any sort of descriptions for people on this. Because um, I, I assumed I would remember. And it took me a moment to remember that Brent Bradleyston is the really unpersonable man that we talked to at the beginning. Um, underneath his name, all I have written is single. With like a <laughs> smirking face. Oh no. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he, had like, yes. he had like 13 wives, but they all left him. And That's you guys true. were convinced he was like dating the, um, or he was like exes with the um, really nice lady you guys liked. Yes, yeah, absolutely. All right, Beth. I'm gonna. We're, we're I'm going. gonna say that that was 100% canon. <laughs> I I think I denied it earlier, um, because I was upset that I I couldn't unveil that as a surprise. <laughs> I don't think you confirmed or denied it. You kind of left it up to our imagination. Uh, confirm. Well, it's confirmed now. <laughs> Thanks for waiting, all, all you listeners. I know you were really excited to hear about Brent Bradleyson's uh, like 14th ex-wife. <laughs> he really just can't. He just can't like land it. He's no. really good. He's actually really good at landing it, but he can't fucking uh, maintain it afterwards. He's he's really good at making the jump. He's not good at sticking the landing. Yeah, his his fucking he's got weak ankles. <laughs> <laughs> he, he breaks his ankles every time. All right, let's get moving. Um, have you guys decided what you want to do? Yeah, we're going to go to his office first. Okay, so the three of you pull out the little scrap of paper where Dandy wrote that note where she wasn't trying to be rude. Um, and there's an address. Uh, and it's listed as, um, you know, his the last place that he worked. Not sure if he's still there or not. Um, now, be aware that you guys were encouraged to not talk to him if you could help it because technically they didn't want you messing with the time stream uh, because if this all worked out you know they would just continue working with Roger because he wouldn't die and everything would be okay uh, and they don't want him to know that he was supposed to die necessarily don't really know what that's going to do to the time stream but <laughs> everything should work out um, so they just just a reminder that they said not to talk to him um but then again, um, they also fucking kidnapped you. So do what you want. That means he's um, here. But you guys uh, head over, head outside, um, and you realize you don't really know where you are. There was, okay, like two episodes ago, there was a nervous looking man who you told us had a car in the lobby. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. He's like <laughs> juggling keys. I go up to him and I say, hi, who? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he drops all of his keys. Oh, my God. I, I have to start bending down and picking them up. I am I am so sorry there, sir. Are, uh, you, are you are you stealing? Nope. Just what? helping just helping you pick up the keys, guys. He, you wanna... he grabs all the keys and he's like, oh, oh, sorry. I, um, I've just been a little um, a twitchy since uh, the earthquake. Uh, I, I don't really trust anybody anymore. Sure. Uh, I don't need you to trust me. I'm Suze, by the way. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves quick? Um. Uh, go 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 ahead. Go go ahead. Go, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm Pete. Uh, you can call me Park. And the guy nods and he's like, "Okay." Cool. This is going well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen. This man is like having a heart attack actively, and listen. we're like, "Hi." Pete How is you... actively Pete is actively schmacked right now, so that's fair. From across the um, lobby, Howie snaps her fingers a couple times. She's like, "Hey, George, do your fucking job." 
And George so, is like, oh, oh God, I'm I'm sorry. Um, are we, you guys are guests get guests here, right? The penthouse uh, suite, yeah. Do you need a Do you need a ride? I drive car, z cars. Yeah, we do need cool. a ride in cars. Cool. It's uh one dollar for ride. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, but you have to <gasps> um, you have to promise not to hit me. <laughs> okay. We won't. How did we hit you. Oh, thank you. Oh my God, you don't understand. I wait, Pinky promise. I, 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 pink, I think I you pinky promise. Pinky promise. Okay, you can't break a, pr a prinky pro. Oh, oh no. He's <laughs> <laughs> really having a rough day. He takes like a few puffs of like an, an ancient looking asthma inhaler. He's like, sorry. I um, I, I used to be a taxi driver and I, um, I worked for um, a very specific man. And when I went, uh, when I did something he didn't like, I used to get smacked. Um, very and I keep forgetting man. that I won't get smacked here. Who did you work for? That is private information, oh. Suze. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep snapping. How he just snaps her fingers, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, you guys aren't like mafia types anymore. Uh, I mean, not, not anymore. Not like that show everywhere. Um, uh, I, I, I'm gonna go pull the car up, and he fucking books it. <laughs> okay, goodbye." There he goes. Uh, out of character, uh, I think we just found minutes, the other guy who's going to tell us about the earthquake. <laughs> after a few minutes, uh, there's a car waiting for you outside. Uh, yeah, I think I think he'd I think he'd have some loose lips. I think he's going to sink some ships on this car ride. <laughs> Do you get in the car? Yeah. All right, yeah. you get in the car. He turns the radio on, and some um, who knows what it is jabbering in the background as he drives. Um, or starts pulling away. He's like, okay, um, so where are you guys headed? I hand him the address. I say, I, I don't, I don't know where this is. He looks at it and he was like, uh, oh, that's a really weird place. I've, I don't think I've ever driven anyone there. Do you, what business do you guys have at the lab? Old friend? Uh, we had it, an appointment with an old friend. Oh, and you don't know where it is? It's been a long time, you know, he, he moved out here, he kind of just gave the address, and, uh, we're just, oh. we're just, we're just, we're just making our way there. That's he's, fine, it's a weird time for a, it, though. a busy person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, what's, what's, like, going on here? Whoever has a, a right time. I guess that's fair. And, uh, he is, uh, now cruising really, like, really well. Like, there's a bunch of still, like, a bunch of shit and, like, kind of people in the streets, but he's just, like, bring Zoom in and doing a great job. <laughs> Don't you make fun of me? You are a fantastic Pete makes, driver. Pete, Pete makes like, that noise in the background. He just goes, <laughs> bow. Bow. Uh, George bow. laughs and he's like, "Oh, thanks. You know, I've um, I've had to get out of many uh, funky situations. You know, you know how it goes." Yeah. Hmm. Who did you say you worked for before this? I didn't. And his grip but who, the did, but who did you work for? Um, well, currently I work for Harvey's <laughs> Haunted Hotel conglomerates. Right, but who did you work for? Sir, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> technically, I work for you now, but I do not have to tell you the name of the man that I served. No, no, that's fair. That's fine. I got it. Who did he you work for? He slumps back in his seat. I work for myself. Ew. He's a contractor. <laughs> contractor. A con artist, huh? I gotcha. Contractor, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Tractor. And I drive He turns tractors. up the radio. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pete's jamming. He's vibing. It's a man talking. <laughs> oh, he's still vibing. He's like, yeah, nice. Um, after after an uncomfortable like ten <laughs> minutes, uh, he he pulls in front of a pretty squished looking building um, that kind of looks like it's been cobbled back together haphazardly. He's like, "Well, here you go, uh, Sniffleton Future Lab. Um, do you guys need me to wait here?" <laughs> I, don't, um, I don't think we'll be long. Okay, uh, then I guess I'll just wait here. Thanks. Uh... Greg? 
<laughs> Pete, Pete starts dying. <laughs> um, George smiles and says, yeah, no. <laughs> Pete, Pete leans over and he's like, I don't think his name is George, Greg. Greg? Greg says, no, my name's Greg. Oh. <laughs> 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 Was it? All right, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Jureg looks off into the distance. <laughs> How much time has passed since uh, my boy Pete has uh, intoxicated himself? I would say at least four hours. Like, oh, guys... he's not. He's not drunk anymore. Then I thought he, it was like uh, probably like an hour. No, because like you guys got like when did you wait? When did you get during the it was surgery? Right before he had his his little shoulder surgery. Oh, 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 yeah, then I would say, like, maybe two hours. Oh, he's still a little drunk, then. Yeah, you can just be tipsy. Yeah, I'll calm it down a little bit. <laughs> Alright. So you guys stand outside of, like, a, a haphazard-looking building, uh, and there's just the word Snifflington's on the door. Uh, it's like a big metal door. I know. Alright. Here's the plan. We go in. And we snoop around, and if there's people there, and they catch us, we feign innocence and pretend we were urban explorers and we thought this place was closed. I can pretend I'm a contractor, guys. Yeah, you do You do you, really good at that. Pete, you are a contractor. Check this, check this out. Check this out. What's up? I'm a contractor. It's pretty good, right? Pete. Yeah. You are a contractor. No. What? You don't know what I am. All right. I open the door slowly. <laughs> All right. I'm following. Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we going in? Uh, I, I guess so. All right, All right you we're guys. Going in. You go inside. Uh, as soon as you open the door, the inside. Uh, you step into uh, what looks like a reception area, and there's like kind of like a dirty-looking lady sitting behind uh, a desk. Uh, flipping through some papers, and when you guys walk in, she looks up really confused. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? I, I don't know. I think you might be in the wrong spot. I know the building looks a little destroyed, but this is uh, this is a laboratory. Um, so unless you're meeting with one of the doctors here, uh, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. No, it's okay. We're bourbon explorers. Um, well, right alcohol park? is illegal, sir, so if you don't vacate the premises, no, no, I'm no, going to have to call the police. Ma'am, you're misunderstanding how it's spelled. It's B-U-R-B-A-N. Mm. I think I'm going to call the police, and she gets All right, up. have a nice day. <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. Right. hang on, hang on, wait, hang on, I, I gotta go up to her real quick. I slide up. Can I slide up? I'm sliding up. You slide up, her hand is on the phone. Uh -huh. Oh, hang on. I'm going to roll charm. Okay. You're going to have to roll really well. Because you guys walked in like a bunch of drunk idiots and started spouting off nonsense. What? If you guys <laughs> let me take the lead, I would have been a contractor. <laughs> just there's a bourbon explorers try to spell it at her. And then just she just chews like, no, nah, I've dealt with enough crazies. And also, <laughs> Pete probably smells like uh, bad alcohol. Pete probably looks drunk, even, so she just, she just assumes you're all drunk. enough. We're not even close enough for her to smell alcohol. Oh, you? Pete smells a mile this away. Is the, this lab is called Sniffling Ting. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> That's, I we, told you that from the get-go. Yeah, can well, we veto that real fast? That could, have, that could have meant that they just have chronic allergies and can't smell anything at all. because they're No, constantly I'm begging sniffling. you. I'm begging you to find out why this lab is called that. Because it has a reason! Okay, uh, Beth? Hi, what? It's, hi, it's me. I got a hard success on charm. Alright, fine. You slide <laughs> up, wink your slinky boy eyes, uh, and she <laughs> puts the phone down. And gives you a look. I think we got off on the wrong foot. Probably. My friends and I, we uh, don't have an appointment, and I'm very sorry about that, but um, no, the 
truth is we were kind of hoping that we might be able to speak to someone who uh, works in the facility. Uh, I, I wish you guys would have just opened with that. Um, all right, which researcher are you looking for? Park, what's the man's name? Oh, um, Roger Hobblescobble? <laughs> Roger? <laughs> Roger hasn't worked here in, like, two months. Oh, okay. Hmm. He, um, yeah, he went a little crazy with the whole radio thing. Um, like, we were just doing radio smell tests. Radio you know, we thought it was tests? the future of smell, but um, Roger, Roger got obsessed with something else, and you know that it went from radios to phones to talking about like moving pictures. Which I mean, I don't know about any of that. So he ended up, um, he just didn't really come back. Like we didn't really let him go. The lab isn't really that kind of a place. Um, but, you know, he his research ended up not aligning with ours, and he just stopped showing up. All right. Um, do you know where he could have gone? I mean, you could always check his house. Um, I'm definitely not at liberty to give that out. Um, but, you know, he was always kind of a, a quiet guy up until this point, uh, and he started saying, you know, this is going to solve the energy crisis. Uh, we're going to, it's going to be an absolutely new way to power the world. Something with radios. I don't understand it. Something about molecules. I don't understand it. Um, uh, after he stopped coming, I mean, like I said, maybe his house, but none of us were really friends with Roger. Um, so, yeah, I'm sorry we can't really help you. But if you would like to know more about the power of your nose, uh, I could introduce you to Dr. Um, Snibble Bibble. Well, who wouldn't want to be friends with you, Rolling Charm, again? Okay. <laughs> That's another hard I, success. She blushes and she kind of pushes some hair behind her ear and she's like, oh, well, thank you. I mean, I'm just the receptionist. I, I've always loved science, but I, I've never really been, you know, in I don't really have the the concentration for it. Uh, I just love hearing about it, but so I I don't really get you know that much attention in this facility. I'm just really good with people. Is she there smiles at you? Is there any way? Uh, this this might be out of line, and I like push hair out of my like forehead. And I'm like, mm -hmm. would you? Give us a tour of Roger's office. Maybe you could help kind of talk to us about what sort of science goes on here. She blushes a little bit and she was like, oh, that's, I don't know about that. I could get in trouble, but maybe I could just sort of show you the room. Um, we don't necessarily need to go in, um, but, you know, that would be an invasion of privacy. But we he was working on some Really, really interesting things before he left i think that would be wonderful what do you guys think oh uh, yeah. yeah great okay uh she pushes some more hair behind her ear i'm georgina hi georgina Suze. you can call me gina gina i like that all right let's she go blushes. <laughs> um she starts like uh walking you back she's like okay so here at um, Sniff Future Lab, um, we study the power of the nose. And, and a lot of people write off the power of smell as a sense, but it's so powerful. It can, uh, it, it can you know, lead to attraction. It can lead you to, um, uh, she looks a little, she looks at you, Pete. She's like, disattraction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people at <best. laughs> um, It can tell you all kinds of things about people. And what if we could utilize that power um, to change the world? You know, just communicate with people through smells. We could we could establish establish uh, so many kinds of communication, and we we have it right at the tips of our fingers. We just need to figure out how to mass produce it, um, and that's what we were working on here: figuring out new ways to incorporate smelling um, into into your everyday life outside of just, you know, creating them yourselves. You know, what if your radio, while it was talking, you could smell the fire that was crackling in the background? Or, or you know, you could smell the guns during, you know, one of those old Western shows. 
there's so much, so many things we could do. You're, you're talking to your grandma on the phone and, and her perfume comes through. You haven't seen her in years. Uh, it's incredible what we could do here. And, and Roger at the time was working on that. He was really fascinated with the idea of, um, of the radios. Um, he thought it was one of the most interesting ways to communicate because it was one way, but at the same time, it was almost universal. Um, and, uh, and she stops outside of a very messy office um, and she kind of frowns and she was like, at the end there though, he got less into smelling and more into talking. He spoke to the radio like it could hear him. It was, it was always very weird. I think he might've just lost it a little. Um, but yeah, it's, here's his office. There's papers everywhere. Um, uh, I'm sure we're going to have to clean it out eventually, but, um. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do here. Do you guys have any questions? No, I think we're good, but that is incredibly interesting. Thank you for sharing. Could we take a look around? Um, uh, and she's like, "All right, if you'd like, I could I could show you guys back to the entrance." The, I would, I would, I would really, Gina, and I like I swoop in real close and I say, Gina, I feel like we've only gotten to know each other in a very short period of time, but I feel a very strong connection to you. Uh, and I would love it if you would let us into that office. She narrows her eyes a little bit and she's like, you smell trustworthy, but I, I, I think I'm going to need a little bit more than that. Cash? <laughs> um, you, can, you want five dollars? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> she puts the five dollars in your pocket. It's like you guys have uh, ten minutes, and she walks away really quickly. Um, and there's like a couple of people in the hallway, and they're like, "Oh, hey, G!" And she falls over, and she's like, "Oh, oh my, my ankle! Oh God, please, you have to help me back to my seat!" Oh, and they're like, "Oh my God, guys, can you help us?" And she's like, "No, not them, not them. They're highly, highly trained individuals. Oh, we can't bother with them right now. They're..." They're they're going through Roger's things. Uh, it, it's very personal work for him. Please, oh, just, oh, just carry me back to the front, please. And they're like, oh my god, of course, of course. And they help her up, and she um, is sort of like dragged away. When when you <laughs> said that we were highly trained professionals, I imagined like one of those SpongeBob cutaways where it shows all of us, and we just look like disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> like Pete is just like fun. bleeding and he's like <laughs> booze like reeking. Yeah. Alright, well you guys have ten minutes in that office. I go inside. Alright, All there's right. a shit ton of paper. There's like trash everywhere. It's really fucking smelly in here. There's radios and radio parts. There's phones. Um like there's a lot of weird shit in here. Jesus um, Roger. Heard of a vacuum? Where are all the radios set to? Um, every single radio is set to um, 38.6. All right. Huh. 38.6 seems to be a popular station for this gent. Well, what, what station is it? Turn on one of the radios. Okay, I turn oh, one boy. on. It's just static. Ah. Maybe, maybe our boy Roger B. Hobble Scobble did go off the deep end. Well, Wait, no, oh, we knew that he on, was talking to future people through these radios. Yeah, I was going to say he was talking to the he was talking through the radio. So why? So then, would they be able to hear us now? Brent, or why wouldn't we be able to hear them? Brent, can you fucking hear us? Brent, hey, Brent, as you guys are talking. Um, the si- the radio s- static starts to settle a little bit, and like def- you can hear it get a little quieter in your ears, and then you hear what sounds like someone laughing. Oh, I don't like that. Brent, it's mm. us, you asshole. And every radio uh. in the room starts laughing softly, and then oh. loudly. <laughs> oh. I don't like that. Can we leave? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Mortals. Oh, I think we should leave. <laughs> uh, I go to turn the radio off. <laughs> yeah, I'm like pressing off. buttons. You turn it off, and that one stops laughing, <laughs> and then it just oh, takes okay. the, the radio goes. 
You cannot silence me, mortal. <laughs> I mean, I, I could silence like you, but I'd literally just leave. <laughs> <laughs> We'll meet in due time. Oh, and no, then I want to. it cracks out. It's just static. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Oh, I don't like that. Um, hey guys, we maybe we shouldn't talk to any more radios. And leave? <laughs> yeah, I, like I like that us. idea. Um, I change all of the radio stations so they're not on 38.6 <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Let me hold on. Hold on. Let me write that down real quick, though. Oh, I already did. Don't you worry. Uh, cool. Thanks, Will. Uh, what percentage of the papers could we grab from Roger's office if we all scooped up, like, huge bundles of them? Uh, pretty much, like, 80% of them. Ah. What if I put, what if I folded a bunch up and put them in my pockets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. If you guys do, if you guys go like and you, move, and you move quickly, I'll let you take all the papers. All right, let's do it fast, guys. Grab some shit. Let's go. Papers. All right, papers are coming. Like they're fucking sticking out of my pockets. <laughs> yes, all of them. Same. Great. Was there a trash can in this room? Uh, yeah, it's full of uh um, empty pudding cups <laughs> and egg Can shells. I dump those out and put papers in there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 You guys only have two minutes remaining. Uh, okay, well, okay. we fucking get out of here. Yeah. Wait, do, should we check the desk for need, stuff? Though. Should should we check inside the desk for like things other I than papers? The desk. the desk is locked. Oh, yeah. I told you we should check the desk. <laughs> I smash it. Can I try and break oh. the lock? Okay, if you do that, you're gonna draw attention to. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, let me find my character sheet. Time out on the time. I gotta find my character sheet to see my lock <laughs> <Okay>. pick. <laughs> time out on time. Guys, time what out you on think time. Of, what did you think of my creepy laugh? I liked it a lot. It was very... Uh, creepy. Uh, creepy Unnerving. and immersive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is astounding. It really right. hurt to do it afterwards, because I was like throwing my head back and like cackling, and then I was like, ah, I live for this. And then uh, my mouth is like, <laughs> I don't live for this, you bitch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I live for this. No, you don't. <laughs> so as I thought, as I thought, my boy Speeder has a uh, 65 lockpick. Mm -hmm. So let me just fucking hold on. I'm going to mute myself so I can move. Okay. Oh, God. He's I hope just going to mute well. himself. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh. Okay. I'm back. Sorry, I just had to get my dice from the, the couch. Welcome back. I want you guys to know that I've been downloading the Humble Bundle the whole time we've, like, I've been listening, obviously, but I've just been copying and pasting the Steam keys. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I did get a, a hard success. All right, you bust that lock open. The desk slides open, um, and it's actually just empty. What the fuck? Oh. <sighs> Can I spot Can hidden for a, a hidden panel? Yeah. Oh, just use, like, yeah. Go ahead. The roll. whole drawer out. <laughs> you can't take the whole drawer out, but you can roll spot hidden. Um. Oh snap! That's an extreme success. All right. Um. You notice, Seuss, um, that there appears to be a false drawer on the bottom, but when you try and um, take it out, it's like stuck. And that's when you notice that there is actually a small, um, like button. On the inside of the um, on the inside of the dre the desk itself, that's sort of jury rigged. When you press it, um, the false bottom releases. Oh! Hmm. Um, when you lift it up, there is a very immaculate looking jury. Oh, I grabbed the shit out of that. Great! Uh, your time is just about up. Guys, let's get the fuck out of here. All right, let's go. I grab all my papers. I'm carrying this trash can full of papers. Smart. You guys skedaddle out of the office, and as you sort of make your way back in the reception area, Gina's sitting there looking really excited until she sees you carrying all of his paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I told awful. you guys she was going to see us. She's like, what are you doing? I gave her another dollar. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need more than a dollar, my uh, my guy. Ten dollars? Yeah. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, bye. 
<laughs> Goodbye, Gina. Take care, my sweet. Gina, we were were never here. Uh, one of you was, and she winks at you, Seuss. I wink Ooh. back and I say, the olfactory power, soul sister. Okay, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 do, do you want my address? I uh, love I, your I, address, please. And she slips a, uh, like a, she writes it down, and she also writes down a little phone number, and she's like, call me right now. Maybe we could go out for dinner after uh, they read some of the restaurants. That would be absolutely delightful. I hope to see you very soon. You will. Mm -hmm. Bye. Mwah. Okay, bye. And I'd like to book <laughs> out of there. <laughs> uh, at the... Uh, Gregor George is still sitting in the car outside. Gregor George, we gotta go! Uh, okay. Uh, and he starts zooming, and he's like, where are we headed? Back to the hotel, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> and he starts slowing down a little bit. <laughs> George, we gotta go! Oh, God. Where? Don't, you know, just back Okay. <laughs> yeah, he takes you guys back to the hotel in relative silence. Uh, a very uncomfortable silence. Hey, uh, Gregor George. Um, yeah, Gregor, Gregory George. Hey, hey, bud, what do you what do you know about radios? Um, I know that I like them. Um, I specifically like this channel. He turns it to seventeen point six, and there's like a lady who's like, mar, 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 mar. <laughs> yeah, the uh, good... and she's like, I don't know what the hell she talks about, but it's just really soothing to listen to her. She's so boring. It's, it's the good shit, <laughs> really Gregor George. Zone out. What? It's, it's the good shit. Yeah. Hey, uh, what do you what do you know about the earthquake? Uh, George tenses up and he's like, "Um, it sure was devastating. Um, it really, really sucks." Yeah, I, I'm very upset about it. A truly a horrible natural disaster. Natural. Yep, fully natural. Natural disaster. It was an earthquake. Gregor George, you little <laughs> man, you. Little so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Yep. Listen, I know what you're implying. I heard you. I'm not telling you. Gregor George! <laughs> <laughs> Gregor George looks a little mad now, and he's like, I'm serious. I um, swore. I'm not telling you. Okay. All right. Well, in not telling us, you've told us that it's not natural. <laughs> he rolls his eyes. That's all we need. I reach like into the front of the car and like turn the volume up on the radio myself. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the car ride passes in very uncomfortable silence. <laughs> Yeah, he drops you guys back off the hotel, and he was like, "Well, pleasure doing business with you, but unfortunately, my car is now out of service. So, um, what? I'm gonna, take it, I'm gonna take my car back to the shop um, to get repaired." Oh. oh, that's really unfortunate. Yes, and he drives away. <laughs> <laughs> I I like him. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you guys are back at the hotel. Okay. Um, I turn to the others and I say, okay, I want to read this journal. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, yeah. If you, I can sort through the rest of these papers if you'd like. Shall we take this up to the room? Yeah. All right, you guys head into the lobby. Uh, Dandy is sort of just chilling in there talking to Howie. Um, when she sees you guys with a shit ton of paper, she's like, what do you guys, what do you got there? Oh, you know, it's just, just business. Nose business. Okay, well, um. Some light reading. Uh-huh, sure looks very light. There oh, it is, uh, it's paper. I can <laughs> see that. Um, well, you know, let me know if you need any help. Thank you. We're, we're still working on kind of cracking the, the mystery, but, uh, I think, I think we're doing good. How he looks up. <laughs> what mystery? You know, and the... Danny's. Like, so... Danny's like, no, no, shut up, Howie. <laughs> you know the 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 earthquake in town. <laughs> Howie blinks, and she's like, "Oh, you mean the fight?" The. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the what? Achievement unlocked. <laughs> Danny slaps the fucking hand over Howie's mouth. 
She's like, no, Howie, they mean the earthquake that you swore was an earthquake. And Howie's like, ooh, my dad. I wink at Howie. <laughs> Howie's eyes glaze over and she's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny's like that doesn't count and walks away. I think it does actually. It what does you, count. Wait, come back. Danny's like, oh. <laughs> Did he know? <laughs> How he starts sinking below the desk, and she's like, <laughs> "You guys can't see me anymore. Oh. I don't. I, I'm going on break. <laughs> Have a nice break. Thank Goodbye." You. Is Snoop Bonnie Donnie still in the elevator? Yeah, he's drunk again. Snoop. Uh, Typical Snoop Bonnie Donnie. My he's like, Snoop, hey, Bonnie, it's my Bonnie. guys. What's up, top floor crew? What's up, well, you know, Snoop just go Bonnie the top Donnie? Floor, Snoop. <laughs> I got you button pressing away. And he... <laughs> Thanks, Snoop. You guys start ascending. Snoop, what do you know about radios? Uh, I know I can't afford one. <laughs> Hey. hey, Snoop. <laughs> Classic Snoop. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a hero. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the elevator passes an uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> And you guys are back in your room, and it is early evening. Okay. I Okay, is there a radio in our room? There is. Oh, I take that shit and I remove it. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Can All we right, get you, rid of that? Where do you want to put it? Next to the, the beds outside. You put it in the hallway. Louisa walks by and she looks at the radio and she's like, didn't like the channel? I, I just came here to service your room. I don't know uh, what the fuck's up with the radio signals in this town. I don't fuck with them though. I don't fuck with them. <laughs> All right. I don't know what sort of local madman you got on like 38 point whatever park. What the fuck was the frequency? Oh, it was 38.6. I don't know who the fuck you got on 38.6, but they're kind of an asshole. I don't fuck with it, so the radio's going out in the hall. <laughs> oh. Yep. Uh, Louisa kind of looks like she just saw a ghost, and she was like, 38.6? Uh, I don't think I've listened to that channel. You shouldn't. Um, it's bad. It's bad. It's a bad what, channel. What, what kind of show is it? Uh, a, a very threatening feeling one. Mm. Well, uh, she picks up the radio and she's like, well, I wouldn't want my guests to feel threatened. So uh, if you'll excuse me, uh, and she fucking buscattles. Thank you. Goodbye. What a nice lady. That seemed incredibly suspicious. Something's wrong with the radios in this town. Yeah, something's wrong with the fucking radio. Something wrong with the fucking everything in this town. <laughs> uh, well, we know the earthquake was a fight. Yeah, what were they doing? Throwing like cursed. pudding at each other? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> they have pudding fights here in Connecticut? Is is there a hotline to a dandy's desk, like, via phone? Uh, you can call the front desk and then ask to be patched through to dandy if you want. I, I do that. Okay, uh, Howie picks up and she's like, hello, front desk. Dandy, please. Uh, uh who is this? Louisa? This is not Louisa. I'm sorry. I <laughs> Suze. Oh. Uh, hold, please. Suze. Hey, Dandy. They live together. <laughs> Dandy, the um, uh, the mysterious people from upstairs who told me not to talk to you anymore want to talk to you. Oh, uh, hold on. She's coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, she, Dandy takes up. She's like... <sighs> Hi, guys. I've solved your riddle. You solved my <laughs> riddle. Yeah? What happened? The whole town was involved in a town-wide pudding fight. Why, I don't know yet. But I do know that every single person in this town is too embarrassed to talk about it. And, you know, I get it. It was pretty embarrassing pudding everywhere. And there's probably no clear winner. And you realize that you all probably wasted a lot of money and time and energy having to clean it up. But, uh just wanted you to know we're mm -hmm. on to you all right then and she hangs up <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I don't think it was a pudding fight you don't Suze, what if it was paint oh. yeah call her back tell her it was a paint <laughs> fight 
she picks up hello paint it was paint not nope. putting oh fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I so paint either. no paint or pudding shit what else is white was it white yeah and tasted like pain yeah. according to you <laughs> <laughs> oh, i uh, forgot about that part you know it could have been white hot paint but she's just lying to us because she's too embarrassed. That's that's possible. Uh, I'm going to look through this journal. Do you two want to start sorting through papers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let me just, before you open the journal, Max, let me tell you about these papers, my guys. Now that you are less stressed out, just glancing at them, these papers are incomprehensible. Uh, if they're not written out in just strings of numbers... Um, they're either written in a language you can't make out, um, or they're diagrams that look, um, to your eyes, uh, vaguely satanic. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and that is, and I'll say this clearly, every single piece of paper you took from that lab, minus the journal that you have not opened yet. Every single paper that you took... You cannot read. You can you can get out uh, that he was doing something really weird. He was attempting to build some kind of machine, and he was working out the specs. Um, but there is not even a little bit of English on that page, any of those pages. Uh, can I attempt to sort the pages into uh, ones that look vaguely similar? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, you can do that. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, that's what I'm doing while everyone else is doing other things. All right, I'll read the journal out loud, but in a voice that sounds like Beth's. Okay, <laughs> here we go, Max. You ready? All right. Yeah. The journal is written in English, and it opens um, to a will, a last will and testament. It says, to whomever fi whoever finds this, um, if you found this, uh, then obviously I have made some kind of grave error. Um, I made a deal with someone, uh, someone very powerful, someone that could change this world as we know it, that could, that could launch humanity into new heights. Um, but it was a gamble I made with my own life and possibly the lives of humanity itself. I, I leave in this journal, my last will and testament. Everything that I've ever owned, ever worked for, I want burned. My home, all of my work, my papers, I need it all to go. I don't want it given to anyone. The money can be donated to um, local charity uh, supporting Sinzaba, my hometown, but my work, my house, everything else I've ever owned or touched has to be burned. You must put the ashes in the ocean where he cannot find them. Because if I can't, if I can't break him, then that means I've been broken. And if I've been broken, then that's one step closer to the end of humanity. Signed, Roger B. Hobblesgobble. Damn. How was my Beth impression? It was really good. Thank you. I thought it was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, thank you. I've been working on it for a while now, so glad I got to uh, break <laughs> it out. And the rest of the pages are blank, save for one page that just circled 38.6. And um, a small note underneath it that says, um, don't leave on because he's always listening. I close the we journal and I say, yeah, Roger, we know. <laughs> Oh, it's a good thing we got rid of our radio. Yeah, thank God. Who, who, how can you listen through a radio? That's not how these things work. Um, maybe it's like a reverse radio. Oh, and like the signals are all like connecting to somewhere else? I guess so. I guess like, it's possible. Like, why else would there just be a woman incoherently talking on 17 point whatever, the one that our driver really liked? I think that might have just been like a radio station. I, d I don't know about 38.6, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that the, the other one 
was maybe just a woman. <laughs> yeah, but like, what, what if what if she doesn't know that she's being recorded? You know? Oh, oh, I hadn't even considered that. Like, maybe some people do, and that's that's the thirty eight point or thirty eight point six that we got. But maybe they don't. Maybe there's just a a bonger's lady out there somewhere babbling incoherently in her home. And that's what that station is. <laughs> this fucking town's fucked up. How, how have I never heard of it? I, maybe they spent a long time pretending or covering up the... I don't know. Why are we here? <laughs> this whole town is whack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta ask you guys this. Um, are we gonna burn it down? I mean, like, we don't even know where his house is. Oh, yeah. Did we not get an address? No. no. Fuck. Well, I have that lady's phone number, so she can probably help us out. But, like... I think she was very adamant about not telling us where he lived. Yeah, but you, you guys don't know me. All right. Well, you can go <laughs> flirt with uh, our, our lovely lady, um... Do you think Dandy will Dandy won't give us information until we know more about the great fight? Yeah, the great earthquake. pudding fight. Um, well, there's Howie who could help us with that, or we can still get the police off Speed's trail. And honestly, maybe we do that anyway, because I feel like it'd be good to help him. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Well, you know what? Let's go talk to the police and lead them astray and then go tell Pete that Sorry, speed. Let's go tell. Let's uh, let's go talk to the cops. <laughs> Beth, do we have time to go talk to the cops real quick? Yeah, yeah we go. We go lead the lead them astray, and then we go to speed, and then speed tells us, and then we go to tell Dandy. It's all falling together. It's wonderful. All right, <laughs> I'm I'm. You're taking charge on this because I I don't know. I don't really fuck with the cops. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's go. Your research material. Are you taking it with you, or are you leaving it in the hotel? We could probably take the journal with us, but I think we should just, like, quietly stuff the papers somewhere that they won't be found by housekeeping. Mm. Under the mattress? Um, yeah. Lay them all out, stuck, stick them under the mattress, remake the bed. Okay, you guys do that. And it, from from your vantage, it doesn't look like anything changed, minus your one uh, uh, radio. All right. We're going to come back here. All those fucking papers are going to be gone. But you know what? I'm not messing with that right now. We're going to the police. I mean, it's fine. The papers aren't even legible. Yeah, it's not even us. In yeah, well, uh, whatever. Who's going to take them while we're gone? I don't know. Radio boy? <laughs> <laughs> He's just a voice in a radio. And there's no radio here. Oh, there's fair. All right, let's go. Snoop. You guys, <laughs> head back out. Snoop is dancing in the elevator. Uh, he's like, hey, how's my lads? Great, <laughs> Snoop. What up? Yeah, what, what floor? <laughs> floor? Floor, floor, please. Uh, floor, floor coming up. He hits six. No, <laughs> Snoop, no, please. <laughs> Snoop, ground level, please. Oh, my B. <laughs> no, you good, Snoop. He hits ground level and passes out. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys think Snoop is a time traveler? I think he's just an alcoholic. <laughs> but listen to the way he talks. <laughs> Don't mind that. He said, "He said my B." I feel like we no one, B. no one talks the way I thought they would in the 1920s. I don't know what's <laughs> up with that. <laughs> guys, come on. <laughs> I wake, I wake, I wake. What's his name up? Snoop. Snoop. He's like, hey, yo, oh, Snoop. howdy there, chaps. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think he's just an alcoholic. <laughs> okay, never mind, Snoop. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you guys arrive at the sixth floor. Cool. And then you he closes the elevator. Now you're on the ground floor. <laughs> Later, Thanks, Snoop. Thanks, Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are in the lobby. Uh, Howie sees you and ducks behind the desk. 
Howie, are you ever not here? Uh, I go up nope. to I I go up to the desk and I I, I, I lean in and I ask Howie uh, very gently where the police station is. <laughs> uh, she pops back up. And she's like, "Oh fuck those guys!" Uh, but yeah, they're about two streets down. If you just take a right, they should be um, right over there. Just um, probably doing nothing. All right, thanks. Typical. No problem. And she goes right back onto the desk. Uh, and as you guys are leaving, uh, in the back corners of the office uh, area we were at, you can see uh, Howie and, or I'm sorry, not Howie, Louisa and Dandy, um, who seem to be arguing over your radio. Hey, everything good? No, no, they're far, like, they're far away. You can, like, see them doing it, but you can't hear them. Oh, okay. They just look like they're having a very heated discussion holding the radio from your room. Um, can I run back to Howie for a second? Sure. Howie um, dips back onto the desk and she's like, oh, um, automatic house? Uh, automatic <sighs> desk service? Howie, what's the least liked place in town? Um, the police station. Second least liked Other than place. the police station. <laughs> the second um, least liked place. <laughs> um, probably... The... Um, fuck. Uh, I don't really go out. Shit. Um, <sighs> hey, George! George turns around and he's like, hey. Oh, mm, sorry, my car's still broken. No, no we don't no, need no, a car. No, 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 no. Uh, tell us the place you hate. And he's like, Um, well, I hate, um, I hate the grocery store. N- not yeah, the grocery store. The grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> grocery store. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I mean, I don't really like the bank. Uh, they never have enough money for me. He looks sad. <laughs> yeah, the bank will do. Thank you. I, I would leave. Howie's like, no problem. Glad I specifically was able to help. Does anyone have any alcohol on them? Does Pete still have, like, any traces of alcohol on him? Probably not. Um, What if we go to the... Hmm... What if we go buy alcohol and then we go to the bank and one of us talks about <laughs> opening a bank account and the others hide the alcohol <laughs> somewhere and then we go to the police and <laughs> and we narc on the bank for hiding alcohol for people. Well, there's no telling what it'll do to the time stream, but uh, also I, I think fuck the time stream because I, I got about like a five minute lecture on how that shit works. So let's do it. Yeah, all right. I I don't think we're going to be able to accomplish our mission that we came here for. But you know, we can we can do some shenanigans to pass the time. We can help speed. Heck yeah. We can help speed. My boy speed. All right, I we go to the grocery store, I guess. You go to the grocery mm-hmm. store. Speed's outside sweeping. He's like, "Uh, oh, howdy guys. How you doing? It's nice we- to see y'all again." It is, a, a it lot is less absolutely a, d- a delight to see you, speak. We need oh, thank you. goods to provide services for you. Apple juice. Uh, oh, you mean that thing? Yeah. Yes. Are, are you are you going to plant it on somebody? I just wanted you to like go deliver a hot tip, and then like they just won't write us. Yeah, but it's yeah, the fucking no, the popo. Hot tip is, not... is that it's the it's the it's the bank. Oh, I mean, you could just go tell them that. The the no offense, but like the police are like downright fucking stupid. Uh, I just wanted you to lie. I mean, if you really want yeah, to go, right. like, because if you really want, um, I just the, like uh, from what I heard, they have like a raid plan for like tomorrow. Uh, I was just hoping maybe you could have them do that somewhere else, and then we could sort of beef up our own security. That's what we're working on, just so when they actually do do the raid, uh, they don't find anything. Um, I, I just give him a slap on the back and I say okay, oh. and I walk away before he's done talking. Oh, uh, bye! <laughs> <laughs> I wave and follow. Um, All right, uh, and are you guys heading for the police station? Yeah. Are you heading to the bank? All right, you guys head for the police station where Howie told you about. Um, the police station is a hundred percent a collapsed building, um, and there is actually like what looks like only two officers sitting outside, um, what doing what appears to be tanning. Hmm. Uh, it, it, hello? Excuse me? Um, yes, hi. How can we help you, citizen? Um, I just wanted to, uh, 
provide uh, a tip to our, our local law enforcement? Um, no, our, tanning our... is not illegal. We are not technically being paid by the state right now. So, yes, it is fine for us to tan. Yeah, no, oh, no, I, I meant more uh, along the lines of uh, uh, local alcohol. Alcohol! Oh. Alcohol oh, is boy. illegal! I know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> are you coming to join the force, Rookie? Uh, no, absolutely not, sir. I just wanted to give an honest <laughs> tip to my, my, my good officers of, of the law. Good. Thank you. We need more snitches in this town. Everyone's oh, so buddy buddy. Everyone's no. so 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 friendly and t and tight lipped. No one would ever let anything go in this town. No, I know. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate it. We got. We heard uh, Vine um, finally got a reliable source. That uh, is it. The is it the grocery store? Because we heard it was the grocery store, and we were gonna go and um, try and get them to tell us. Actually, no, it isn't. Um, I was actually coming to tell you about the bank. Uh, you see, um, I've heard from reliable sources that because you know, you know, they have like the vault. They keep the money in the vault. Well, obviously, there's a lot of hiding places in a vault because who's gonna go into a vault? Can you? No one's persuasion? gonna break into a bank. Can you roll persuasion for me? Yeah, one second. <laughs> I keep forgetting that this is a. I keep forgetting that this is a role playing game, uh, and not just us talking to each other and like role playing. <laughs> well, it could just be a role playing game without dice. That's true. I mean, if you let me go long enough, it will be. I always get to make you guys roll for shit. <laughs> <gasps> um, fast talk, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a hard success. The police uh, puts his shirt back on, and he's like. Uh, Stephen, we may be the only two volunteer police officers left in this town for the time being until they can get us a proper headquarters, but by God, I will not let the citizens of this town indulge in alcohol while it is still <laughs> technically illegal. Come on, we're going to the bank right now, and I'm getting into that vault. Wait, you should and... do it tomorrow. Okay, you're right. You're right. I don't want tan lines. And he takes it back off. He's like, thank you, citizen. <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, and congratulations! <laughs> Convince the police! Alright, we go back to Speed now. Speed's still sweeping. He's like, howdy! The police are so incompetent. You're never gonna have an issue. <laughs> There's nice. literally only two of them. They're Wait, volunteers. really? volunteers. Yes. They're tanning oh. inside of the rubble of the police station right now. <laughs> he laughed and he's like, well, that sounds about right. Alright, cool. Well, um... Listen, I, uh, I know I told you I would tell you guys, and I mean it. I, I meant it. Um, I just, you guys got to understand, like, what happened was legitimately insane. Um, so, and I, I can't really explain everything what happened. I should tell you what I know, what I saw. Um, I, you might probably won't believe me, but, like, I swear... And he gets very close, and he's like, but you cannot tell anyone I told you. Because Sounds good. Yeah, we swore. All right, well, about a week ago, um, it was horrible. These giant vine tentacle things were everywhere, spreading across town, going miles and miles away. I don't know how they out, but they, were, they started here in this giant like a whole thing and then these these blob things people just kept falling from the sky that's that's the white stuff i don't know what it was but people were screaming and people alive folk were drowning in it you know they were coming down like the force of like the stars it was it was killing people and it was everywhere and it, and, and it was like and it was like people were getting taken over. It was it was bizarre. Everyone was both like alive and dead, and it was all you could do to hide. But then these fucking tentacle things were everywhere too. And then and here's the biggest thing of all. Then this giant fucking owl thing uh, with some people on his back uh, just starts fighting it, and he basically smashed that thing into a hole. And then he hopped in too. And then it was just gone. And now there's a big old. Pretty much filled in hole in the center of town where the where the big old fight thing happened, uh, and then after a little while, all the white blobs just kind of went away, 
Um, and I, I genuinely don't know when any of that was. Um, but I was told not to turn on the radio. Um, so I did not. But um, I, I don't really know who that thing was with, the, the, the big owl man. Um, but honestly, thank God for him because <laughs> uh, I don't know what would have happened if he hadn't, um, I guess, stopped it. it I don't know. I, I didn't really watch the whole thing. I just saw, like, a little bit of it and then thought maybe I was having, like, the worst stroke ever. So I kind of hid. Uh, and by the time it was over, everything was just kind of gone. But I heard bits and pieces from people. I can't really say if 100% of that is true. Um, that's just sort of, like, that's what I saw. And when it was over, like, what are we supposed to do? Who's who's gonna believe what we saw? Um, I don't like. I, I don't know how much, how far those tentacle things went, but um, they wrecked us, and and everyone just agreed to lie because it was so much easier. Because how how are you gonna explain that to folk? So yeah, I understand. Yeah, you do sound you pretty do? fucking crazy, Speed. What? Well, no, Suze. Giant owls. I, I told mean, you, I told you, listen, I told you, that is the God's honest truth, that is what I saw, he had massive boy legs, like really thought long chicken legs, um, but he was an owl man, um, and he could talk, I guess, I didn't hear what he said, but apparently he could talk, um, so, if you can, if you can get it, at the truth out of anyone else, I swear to God they'll back up that story. Um, but also, you probably won't because we all swore never to tell anyone because it would make us sound like a bunch of loonies. Oh, okay, Steve. I can, yeah. I can, I can, I can understand why that would make people uh, think you were crazy, but I also can uh, fully believe it after uh, the past twenty-four hours we've had. See, this town's fucking weird. I love this town, Sinzaba. This is my home now, and I, I want to do what I can for it. Um, but I, there are weird things. There's a lot of weird things in this town. I don't know what draws them here. I don't know if it's magic, spirits, uh, demons. I don't know. But I just try and keep my head down and um, just turn a blind eye to uh, some of the shadows that skitter on past. Like the rats don't do not focus on rats in this town. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess you've given us a lot to think about here, Speed. So uh, I, I think I'll let you get back to your sweeping. He starts sweeping in. He starts chuckles a little bit. He's like, I warned you. <laughs> I fucking told you. I, I told you. Y'all are real nice. I'll understand if you never come back because you think I'm crazy. I get it. But I told you. And he just sweeps. Uh, yeah. I guess we head back to the hotel then? Okay. You guys make your way back to the hotel looking visibly shaken. Um, Howie catches a glimpse of, you, glimpse of you guys and dives under the desk. I, okay, I, I think we're just standing in the lobby, but I turn to the other two and I say, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of mad. About what? We did him a favor and he just lied to us like that. I don't, I mean... I don't, I don't think he lied to us. Guys. After, how, Suze, how did we get here? I know. I know. But that's science. All right. Suze, There's something brought us here. That happened uh, with the man that shot our companion. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You lick the white paint on the sidewalk and it doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like pain. I know. I Listen, I get that. And the radio was fucking laughing at us. But... Do you guys, is is that really your logical conclusion? Is that what it all comes down to? That a fucking giant owl rose out of the ground and fought a bunch of fucking tentacles? I mean, we could ask Dandy. Yeah, How you know what? There was a fight, and that sounds like a fight, so we could... Let's do that. I've already told her that it was pudding and paint. You know what? Let's just cement it a little further that no one in town should ever tell us anything. Hey, Dandy! A dandy uh, pokes her head around from her office, and she's like, uh, yeah? How are the giant owls around here? She drops her book, and, uh, like, in, like, six very large strides, she slaps a hand over your mouth, and she's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> in my office, right now, and she starts dragging you. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds pretty concrete to me. I follow her. <laughs> she slams the door, locks it, and closes the little blinds. And she's like, what the fuck did you say? I said <laughs> that we've got it all figured out this time, Dandy. It wasn't paint. It wasn't pudding. It was people, right? It was people. And they rained down from the sky, and everyone was alive and dead, and a giant fucking owl rose out of the ground and fought off a bunch of tentacles that stretched who knows how far away. And then you all swore to secrecy because for some reason, okay, someone in town decided it was easier just to tell us that this is what happened instead of just saying, no, I can't tell you. Okay, that's where we're at now. Uh-huh. Okay. So let me be let me be straight with you guys. Um so I'm a woman of my word. Um that is what happened. Uh Seuss drops I to the ground. Assume, uh what? Seuss drops to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you see why I was like, hey, guys, a bunch of random strangers from out of town who don't know it, um, why you shouldn't be sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? Um, because you don't know anything that happened here. You don't know any of the whole things that I personally had to go through uh, to get that fucking monster out of our town. That Those giant tentacles thing, that was a big ass half of a demon thing. And that, that giant owl? That was my other friend, a fucking demon. And it doesn't even matter that I'm telling you, because you don't believe us. I knew you wouldn't gonna believe us. And that's fine, because whatever you're here, whatever reason you're here with your friend, I, I know you guys heard uh, some weird shit coming from a radio. You're already in it. Obviously, your friend was in it too. I don't know if he's still alive. Um, you know, we kind of shut... Um, all that demon stuff down. Um, there shouldn't be any anybody else talking to people through radios. So I don't know if you had locked into something that maybe he was fiddling with beforehand. Um, plenty of people were talking to demons and making deals in this town. Um, but that, you know, that's over now. We ended it. And uh, personally, I, I, I didn't really want more people poking around. Uh, now that I know a little bit more about what was going on, uh, and I mean a little bit, um, I have to make sure that this shit stays dead. Um, so, you know, if you guys want to hop back on the train, go back to wherever you came from, I understand. That's fine. Uh, if I find your friend, I'll send you a letter. Um, but, like, by all means, leave. It's not that simple. It is that simple. I will it be isn't. I... You th you think that we don't believe you. I fully believe that that's exactly what happened. The reason we're here is because we're being blackmailed into finding out what happened to this man. We're from a century in the future. Okay, I don't really believe that. Um... It's fine. We literally have nowhere to go, though. We're staying in your hotel for, what, it was a couple hundred dollars for a week? Because we're stuck here for a week. We don't have cars. Have you noticed that I asked you how much a shirt costs? <laughs> I just thought you were dumb, to be honest. I'm really sorry. No, I just, we're not from this time period. And we are here because apparently something happened here at this time period that threw out whack uh, human genetics. So we have cool molecules that people can throw through time and that's why we're here. And like you said, that sounds stupid and really hard to believe because it is stupid and really hard to believe. We can't just go home. You can't just write us a letter if you find our guy a few weeks from now. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I will I will level with you guys. That's extremely fair. Um time time travel I guess uh I didn't think it was uh, I still assume it's not that possible. I don't doubt that what you're saying is true. Um Simply because I sure it has something to do with a demon, and that makes sense. But uh, and I, I I trust me I've seen I've seen plenty, uh, but 
if if you still want to find your friend, um, I swore I'd help you, and I will because, like it or not, now I have to find your friend. Well, cool. Uh, I guess that starts by burning his house down, Ben. What? What? Why? <laughs> uh, last will and testament. We have to burn it down. Did you? We also have to burn all his papers, but I don't think I want to do that yet. Uh, is he dead? Did you find his body? We found a journal. Where? In his office? The office I sent you that he hasn't been for months? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that necessarily means he's dead. Yeah, but if we burn I mean, his house down, he'll probably come out and find us. <laughs> <laughs> Dandy laughs. She's like, all right, I guess that's a fair. I don't really, I would prefer not to burn his house down um, because I don't, I don't subject myself to that level of illegal activity. Um, well, well hang I on. I absolutely have to, but. Here's the thing, Okay. He's going to be alive for about five more days, and that's that's future vision right there, lady. That's that's we know that, right? Okay. But you don't need to know that. And we found a journal that says that if we found it, he's dead, and that if he was dead, we had to burn his house down. So technically, mm-hmm. you're just enacting a last will and testament. Um, it is written down. It is evidence. You can. Uh, we can show you. Can I see it? Do I have it on me? Yeah, uh, you have it on. You brought it with, with you. Us. Yep, I show her. As she looks at it. She flips through the pages. Uh, she does stop at that page in the middle of the book that you guys saw, and then closes it and hands it back to you. <sighs> okay. Well. Um. So yeah, your friend is definitely dealing with a demon. Um. That uh, sounds like a really strong one um i'm gonna have to go talk to one of my friends um i am not going to introduce him to you because that's a little bit too much uh and i'm gonna i'm gonna try and leave you out of my business as much as possible i hope you guys understand i think Um, that would be for the best but uh if you want why don't you guys why don't we call it a day you guys go back upstairs try and process uh and i'll i'll get some more information tonight and tomorrow we can we we can head for his house do you know where it is do you have do you have his address i can mm-hmm. find out or i can uh if you oh yeah it, yeah I that can. would work that would that would be good okay uh well yeah okay well um uh well oh, oh, sorry out of pure curiosity what year did you guys come from uh, the year 2020. Oh my god. Or 2019? I think it was like 2020. <laughs> okay. Well, that my, my confidence time, you in, in slightly wavered. But... go back in time, you uh, know? Okay. Listen, well, I don't really, anything after I don't... 2015 is just fucked, so like... I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. I, I, I don't understand how any of this works. Um, I don't want to <laughs> ruin anything, but... Um, I just wanted to know how far how far into the the head you guys were, and that's a whole lot. So, uh, I'll why don't I work on getting you guys some better fitting clothing so you look like normal people? Please, yeah, no that'd offense. be lovely. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll take care of that tonight. You guys just go upstairs, process, maybe get a game plan. Um, if you can compile all the information you have on Roger for me, um, that would be super helpful. Um, but I would be in the hotel probably for the rest of the night. So just, you know, give me a ring if you need anything, okay? Uh, and mm-hmm. I I meant it. Louisa, Howie, um, they all know what's going on, but you're not going to deal with any of them. This is just a me thing. They need They, yes. they need to stay out of it. Of course. Okay. I, I appreciate that. Don't even tell them what we're doing. Like, Louisa came to me with the radio thing, freaking out. You know, she thought... Um, so just try and keep this on the down low as much as possible. I really I really don't want her getting into this anymore. Okay, we can do uh, that. Okay, I, I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <sighs> try and sleep tonight. Do, do your best. Uh, yeah, we'll, mm. we'll, we'll try. 
All right, cool, good talk. Uh, she, so she slaps you on the shoulder, launch forward. <laughs> uh, and she leaves. Bedtime. 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 You guys heading back up to your room? Uh, After we take the papers out from under the bed, because I don't fuck with that. <laughs> That's very hmm. fair. All right, you guys head back up to your room. Um, but the papers aren't under your bed anymore. Oh. Mm. Because wow. they are... They are um, burned on the floor, and in the ashes, someone has written the words, uh, you'll never find him in time. And that's where we're going to end things. Ah, oh, that fucking uh, Brinkles uh, bunt cake motherfucker. <laughs> we should have killed him. <laughs> that's my hypothesis. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I... Looks like things are things are going. Um, let's. Is everyone ready? Yeah. Let me see if I can find my pile of amiibos in my way. Do you guys hear my cat? No. no. Is it Freya? It's Freya. She's screaming. That's me not coming too. through oh, at Freya. all. You. <laughs> She's. Ye Come here, Freya. Hi. Stinky. All right. Okay. She should stop now. Okay.